let me just say this real quickly that listen this is one of my favorite songs now if I, my hair grows by september brand new hair brand new me and that'll be my song for the moment and welcome to the part two conversation here studio 899 it takes you and just jam into some good adama tunes as well as we mentioned uh, from yesterday that she was going to be our guest this morning on the show and she is live in the studio with us looking all very melanin if i can say <laughs> welcome to the show thank you so much hi adama hi jay Chale, your name is the <laughs> name that we say when we don't want to talk about all those you know like like when we, when we talk about classic artists like mm -hmm. always uses a adama like Sharp. Oh, yeah, straight. Like right? we've we said it since the show's begun. We always say when we're talking about good artists, it's like when we're going to put our best foot forward, we all mention your name. Oh, you, you, Ria Boss, um Asi Rene, Baba J, Olasi, Tito Usu. Yeah, yeah. It's a whole squad. We have our own personal music album. I love the war ever pie. Those yeah. are very, very impressive names. Yeah, yeah. yeah impressive names. <laughs> the squad is thick. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Welcome to our studio. Thank you. Thank you. I was, I was yeah. wishing that we should get Adama to give us a live performance one of these days, you know, on our on our Fridays. But I'm sure we'll work that out. Very oh yeah, soon. definitely. Yeah, okay. yeah. Should so people can feel, you can feel it. <laughs> Let me tell you my part of the story. So, um, a couple of years back, I heard uh, a, a Bafira cover. And then um, there were two guys, one was called Terry, that was called Tia. And I would bug them that, Charlie, I want to meet that girl. I want to meet that girl. Who sang that song like, you know, over and over again? And I think from that day till now, we've had a very good relationship, yes, you know, we have. <laughs> uh, till this very spot. I don't even know where to kickstart this conversation because there's a whole lot to talk about mm -hmm. um, from alternative music to uh, becoming Adama and then becoming Adama, the, the, the album. So the first one is uh, becoming Adoma. The person. Very, the person. No, the person, yes. yes. <laughs> the person. Yes. And then the album itself. Yes. And then your entire career in, uh, in the movie world that you find yourself in, um, filming over 500 episodes. 520. 520 oh. episodes. Yes. Yeah, I'm even Two tired. Years. I'm even Fort tired. Two. I'm even tired. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. Sorry. You know, and... and um, and I mean, there's like I'm saying, there's a whole lot to discuss, you know, in there. But I want to get first into, let me get intimate. And when I say intimate, let me get back into the making of Adoma. Okay. Um, in the very, very beginning, what was the, what, what were the, the interests, the, what you're looking forward to doing, um, your purpose, yes, if I can say that. Um, growing up, I feel like I've always been, I've always been a creative. I've always uh -huh. been, in fact, when I was little, um, my Mad sister, scientist, creative? No, <laughs> my sister used to tell me I pretty much used to do everything. Okay. I, I used to design, like, oh. clothes. I was a bit of a fashionista and I'd be very creative with things. I didn't sew necessarily, but I'm the, I was the kind of person who takes some scrap from here and some scrap from there. And by the time you put it together, it's like, hey, where did that come from? There was that. I used to draw. Oh. I used to sing, I used to dance. Like, a lot of that has sort of whittled away because I haven't been as active in so some of those things. But yeah, that's where music was. I, I wouldn't necessarily say I used to sing, sing. I knew I had a good voice because I come from a very musical family. But yeah. it never really go was back, Go theme. back into that, a musical family. So just yes. spread that part a bit. Um, so yeah, my whole family has some music something in them. My, my, <laughs> my, my dad sings, my mom sings. My mom was like a, a big thing. Like she used to sing yeah. when she was really little. Um, my brother is a producer, singer. I have my, my younger brother is like a multi-instrumentalist producer, uh -huh. singer. I feel like I'm the least talented in my family. Wow. Like, all I do pretty much is sing, but everybody else has like some other thing that they do with regards Rewind to Rewind the but, yeah, story to the point when you mentioned dad. You know, um, yes. it, is, it is, you know, your, your, your dad is a big person. He's a big man. Yeah, yeah your dad I is like a big talking man. about my dad. But. It's, it's a big <laughs> man. Your dad is a big man. You know, and, and how your dad has been um influential and supportive in this in this space because mm -hmm. you know sometimes parents always have their own i want my daughter to or my son to be a pilot you know to be a skydiver yes. to be a, a, <laughs> yes. a, an international swimmer but yeah. of course the child has got his, his or her own uh, path that they want to charter how did, did this work for you as well so the interesting thing is I had never really had a conversation with my dad about wow. like, movie. I, like I said, I used to do a lot of things and it's like everything is encouraged. 
But we never really had a conversation of, oh, you have to be, my parents never did that, you have to be a doctor, you have to be. Ah. At some point, so my mom is a doctor, and at some point mm. I wanted to be a doctor. Okay. Till I realized that I can't stand blood, so that's a whole, <laughs> once, once that is a whole thing, I don't know how I will help someone if the person is beating, I will cry with you, and yeah. you probably die. So <laughs> I realized that that's, that is not I'll for me. <laughs> that's not for me. Yeah. But yeah, um, we never really had that convo, so. I used to hear a lot of parents, you know, friends who would say their parents don't support this and that. And mm -hmm, I just mm -hmm. assumed mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. my parents were the same. Mm. So I, for some reason, I, I don't know why, but I didn't have that conversation. So when he came, I knew that I wanted to do, um, at the time, I really was interested in acting. I actually wanted to go to NAFTI. Okay. Because um, music never really crossed my mind as a career. I knew it was something I could do. But like, that's what I wanted to pursue. I couldn't tell my parents. Wow. So I eventually got into um, GIJ at some point, which is mm -hmm. one of the things I used to do, which is write. Mm. But it's not, it's, not, it's not where my heart was like that. So after level 100, I mustered up courage and I went to tell my dad that, yeah, I wanted to go to NAFTI because I wanted to pursue acting. And he's like, ah, so why didn't you tell me? So oh. I would have gone there. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know. I was like, why would I stop? So long as you're not killing anybody, you're not, <laughs> you're not scamming, you're not a, an arm robber. Yeah. The sky is the lip. Like, whatever it is you want to do, I'm here yeah. 100%. Yeah. And I'm like, I didn't know that. But they're like, I, I was already in school. So it's yeah. like, okay, finish and then do whatever it is you want to do. So yeah. I finished GIG. And then after I was working at, at Viasat at the time, mm -hmm. music happened. Like, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I didn't even know how that, how, I didn't know it would be a big thing. A friend of mine had heard me sing, you know, rec um, small recordings on my phone. And it's like, oh, you should sing, you should sing. And I was trying to, like, leave me alone. I don't think so. I don't think my voice is mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Constant pressure, like, for three months, back to back. So, honestly, mm -hmm. it was to get him off my back. Shout out to Akwesi. It was to get him off my back that I recorded the Buffy Rap mashup. And then it blew up and I'm like, wait, wait, I'm I, sorry, I didn't what? It was to get him <laughs> off your back yes. by recording that song. Yes. So he stops reminding so that I can and asking. Stop, so that I can't breathe. So that you can't stop disturbing me. That's why aren't you yes. singing? Yes, because literally it was every day. Have you recorded something? <laughs> Have you recorded? <laughs> Have you recorded? Have you? So it's like, okay, fine. Let me record so that I can have peace. And so I did that, and then he's also a filmmaker, so he's like, oh, he'll shoot a video and we'll put it on YouTube. I'm like, ah, right, cool, it's not what you want to do, that's fine. So he did put it on YouTube, and it's like, ah, finally I can breathe. It's on YouTube. <laughs> Occasionally I can go, and he's like, oh, I did this, and then that's it. So to see it blow up, I'm like, I'm wow. Sorry, I all of a sudden, people are like, she's a musician. I'm like, I'm a musician? <laughs> That's interesting. Like, people are referring to me as celebrity. Me? Celebrity? Mm. That's wild. Mm. But yeah, mm. it, took a, it took a whole... Um, yeah, it took a while to even get into... I remember for like three months after I blew up, I was constantly shaking. Because I'm a very private person. Yeah, even that in, much, yeah. In secondary school, there are people who didn't even know I was in the same school with them. Which school would that be now? I went to Wesley Girls mm -hmm, High School. Mm -hmm. And like, that times when... Gay after, chicks. After I blew up, somebody's like, uh, oh, that, that she went to gay, and someone's like, you went to gay, really? Went. I was very, very incognito in the school. Like, very quiet, very to myself. So... Putting myself out there and yeah. being this public person, it took a while to to, to open up for <laughs> people to you know yeah get. I, I I'm still not very used to it. I remember even when I was here, they were taking videos of me like, as shy. I was entering the studio, and I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like, what do people do? Be the day maybe. <laughs> 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 still, be the day yeah, I'm still not very used to it, but yeah, Charlie. Well, so I, it's <laughs> exciting to see that you know that family interest. Yeah. You know, I'm just wondering why you didn't become a doctor. Like, I can't stand blood. So like my, my brother just... my brother had an accident and like with the little that I know, first aid. You see, as a doctor is the first thing, mm -hmm. like how yeah. do we stop? <coughs> he was crying and guy I was standing there, we were both screaming and crying. And like I yeah. that's when I realized there's no point. It's because no point. You, it's not for you. It's not for you will die. <laughs> and I'll be there with you, hoping you don't die, but not like yet. So, so before the recording of uh, Bafira, were you recording any songs before no, then? No, I Nothing. was just doing like, um, so when I hear an, a, a song, I would just interpret it my own way as a voice recorded thing on my phone. Yeah. Just for fun. So I think a friend of mine heard one of those things and, oh... Oh, okay, you should you should take this. Then I'm like, oh, please. At first, I thought it was a joke. Ah. Like, let's be serious. So no, <laughs> no music 
um, nothing music completely. I was a professional bathroom singer. Mm. That's the extent. That's the extent of my. You know CV. the walls of the bathroom. You know if oh, you have no, the voice, yeah. yeah. they hear plenty of things. Man, <laughs> man, 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 my voice really in the bathroom. Man. <laughs> like, I, look, Pavarotti doesn't even come close to me. <laughs> and singing in front of a standing fan. Oh, oh. <coughs> yeah. The original auto The original yeah. auto yeah. It makes your voice sound so nice. Yeah. What, what, who were you? What kind of songs were you listening to at that time? Because clearly it has influenced your yeah. your music. What were you um, listening to? I grew up listening to a lot of jazz. So um, sometime when I was nine years old, I was watching a movie and I heard, um, I think it was Parents Trap or so, and I heard um, Michael Bublé's cover of L.O.V. Mm. And I was like, oh, what was that? Like, the, it just gave me chills. And then it just, I started on that trajectory, listening to a lot of jazz, a lot of blues, very old school um, so, sounds. So That's you cool. liked it? It wasn't like yeah. somebody was playing it constantly no, that you no, had no, to no. force yourself? No, 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 something I liked and I spent like, my formative years pretty much listening to that and so i feel like when it came down to making music because i had spent so much so because there was a strong era of jama music i'm sure around that time and and yeah. hip life music around that time which was constant on radio and television mm -hmm. and how that didn't influence you in any I, way see, the truth is i wasn't even listening to those things like i i didn't know what was the latest song mm -hmm. like completely zoned out of, of reality of, mm. so yeah that 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 and so you didn't even have Ghanaian artists that you were. I mean, were... of course, like if I'm like driving past somewhere or like radio, you're in a car mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. hear some songs and it's like, okay, this song is there, but like I wasn't actively because you make difficult song. music, if I can say, you make yeah, very I, difficult I music. So I guess. Like the <laughs> you know the, the the ideas around it the the, the tunes the um, depth yeah it's right. yes. it, it's not something that you can easily replicate you you must be you must have a certain background mm. before you can you know get in, get yourself in there mm. okay so now let's let's go back to the Bafira story so yes. after the song blew up um, I did have an interview with Stone Boy and I asked him about this and yeah. he said that yeah he heard this girl yeah, yeah. you know. Um, <laughs> Had that had there been any form of a link up connection at that time with him of any sort? No. Zero. Never. The only person I knew in the industry, because we went to school together and we were really close, was Adina. Mm. Like I mm. was very so she was the only celebrity that I knew. And even that one, I I, I barely used to go out with her in circles like I was out with. Mm -hmm. Maybe occasionally. When she just won stars of the future, yes. But like aside that I had no link with nobody. I nobody. Didn't, didn't know no one. Nobody, no. So what, what did you do after that? Afterwards, at that time, when when the song blew up, what did it set you? What to, uh, you know path did did it set you on? Um. So immediately that happened. So the thing is, my my friend Akwisi, who was putting pressure on me, he had mentioned prior to it that oh you're going to blow, you're going to be a big superstar. You, I can see it. The world like, mm -hmm. and I'm just sitting there like, oh, God, can you stop? I never believed it for one second. So after it blew. I was like, I told you. I told Didn't you. I, did I not say it? So immediately, a team, like he was there, he contacted Reynolds. Before yeah. you knew it, there was a label. We were, a team just, we just formed. Came up, yeah. And so it was like, I always had these um, creative people around me with regards to making music. And the next thing just felt like, oh, this has popped off. It's something you enjoy. Mm -hmm. I love music. I love to sing. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things I had to learn. Like, I didn't know anything about. I didn't know anything about music. Mm. So it was like, I'm now learning. And the people I had surrounded myself with had knowledge about it. So it was like, I'm learning on the job. I have this team around me. And we're just continuing. Well, so at that point, what was family saying? My dad was super, my dad, super supportive. So my dad in, in the house, we have a very big But you house. didn't sing in church? So towards the end... <laughs> Before, before, before Jesus came I in. feel like everything was <laughs> happening in consect. I don't know yeah. in a way to lead up to this because towards the end of 2014, yeah. I was forced to join the choir at church, and oh, yeah? like a month later, soprano. Yeah, a okay. month later is when this happened. So everything was happening at the same time. So I, I, I started singing. Even that one, Charlie, I didn't want to because the first time I had a panic attack. I couldn't sing in front of I couldn't sing even my family couldn't sing in front of me because I was very shy, super reserved. But yeah, I had sung just at the like tail end of twenty December there. 
God will say, started. when I give you, when I give your voice to sing praises song to me, you sound house. la 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 li, 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 la lo. You chose to sing la la li, li, la lo. No, 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 no. My dad, my dad has been super yeah. supportive. And my uh -huh. dad is a pastor. Mm. And um, because I had gone to school, um, journalism school, and I was working, mm -hmm. I mean, I was earning an income. It's a stable job. Advice at one prestigious mm -hmm. TV station. Mm -hmm. um, I eventually decided that I didn't want to do that anymore. I wanted to do music. So I had to have a conversation with him. And of course, it came up. Why music? Why are you leaving something so secure to come and do something that we don't understand? We, I, I mean, I get the buzz and everything, but how... There's no, we don't see there's no the structure. Yeah. Like, there's none of that. Um, and then, of course, why not gospel? And... But for me, I, 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 I'm a Christian, and I can sing about God and all of that, but I didn't want to limit myself because I have a story. I mean, I feel like if I boxed myself as a gospel artist, there's so much I can't... You, you won't know about um, Penisa or so mm -hmm. like hair. <laughs> I won't be able to sing about skin. Like, it's, it's very restrictive, and there's so much to put out there in music as well as the gospel. Mm -hmm. So I explained that to my dad and he's super supportive. Mm. In fact, donated his steady space, which is what we're using as a studio right mm -hmm. now, super supportive from day one. I feel like my dad is my biggest fan. They wow. were at sometimes yeah. even in church when I release music, he will announce it after service. So uh, <laughs> my daughter just released everybody go in there and go and, and go and download, go and listen, stream like he does that all the time. So yeah, super supportive. Now I, I understand that when <laughs> your parents are supportive of what you do, it gives you some sort of confidence. Confident, it puts you idea. on, you know, a level that you can't compare with those whose parents don't support them from the your onset. Your mother has been supporting Cyril's marriage for you so years and you have so I you can't haven't hear you him. haven't found motivation in that. I can't, hear, that. I can't, hear, I can't hear the both of you. Mm, yeah, but okay. anyway, so that's like that's selective deafness. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Deafness. That's what it is. That's what it is. But how has this support um, brought you far, right, from when you started through the journey till now? I feel like I've had to develop my confidence as a musician because, like I said, it's not something I thought I was. Um, and having that, like having people around you who believe in you, not just the fans or the audience, but your team and then your family who are like, oh, you're good at this. This is amazing. Like mm -hmm. it's, if I didn't have that already, I was doubting myself. Let's put that right. aside. So imagine the immediate family and everybody's like, ah, oh, no, no, no. Charlie, you are not even very sure already of what you're doing, but like you have some small wings to fly because you know that the people closest to you are like, oh no, you got this. You can do this. So believe in yourself basically. So yeah, I don't think I would be here if but I But did you ever that. feel that you failed them at any point in time oh, throughout course. the journey? Oh, definitely. I mean, the doubts did. Yeah. <laughs> the doubts are always there. But there. like, yeah, it's it's definitely still something I love. Um, and I feel like the more I be I'm myself, I'm authentic to who I am. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's, it's working, it has worked, and it will continue to work. And so... For them, as long as I'm happy and I'm doing what I'm, I love and it is paying off, mm -hmm. even if it's not paying off as much as I want it to, mm -hmm. they are proud regardless. So long as I'm not killing anybody, <laughs> stealing, scamming. <laughs> really important. Yeah, that's what my dad says. <laughs> well, if you just joined us, we're having a great conversation with Adama, and she's our guest this morning on Three Music's Culture Daily. Um, it, it's going to be a very great conversation because there's a whole lot to catch up on. Now, my question, my next question is, um, or conversation is about a cluttered space of Afro beats and uh, Jama and high life and hip hop. And there's a certain kind of music that you do. How, you know, I've, I put up a photo on my IG a few seconds ago and I said, you know, it was a great photo that Serial shared for me. He took off me. Uh, his phone took a picture of me. Um, I was looking very good. It's me that's made the, the camera look good, not the okay. camera making me look good. Okay. And, and it's, uh, it's a great photo. Tomorrow. It's a great photo where everything is blends in. And it's hard for you to tell, to see, because there are a lot of things in the, in the picture. Yeah. But that is how I describe where we are now. Okay. But how do you find yourself in this space? And how do you single out and be bold and confident that what you are doing is flourishing or will flourish? I honestly have to give props to the people around me. Um, because like I said, it's not something I believed in myself to start with but everybody around me has sort of encouraged like they've i'm like i was like a seed that they've watered and mm -hmm. nurtured and plant and you know cared for over time and eventually i have gotten to that point so yeah 
that's how that's that's pretty much how that happened. The team has managed to the keep team, you. Honestly, I can't. Afloat. I can't. Yeah. I can't even say you. Are, you know. You, are, you know. Loki, you are part. Yeah, I'm trying so to yeah. ask the question so I see if I don't know much shot. about it, but I have to <laughs> know much about it. You know, but you know, it's 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 pretty important to understand the importance of a team. Yeah, honestly, you know, to that's to make this yeah. because, um, for the kind of first of just for listeners' sake, what kind of music would you say you do? Um, alternative, experimental. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Alternative experiment. You know, if you look at some of the subjects uh, that people sing about, mm -hmm. um, if you chose love, you sing it in a different concept. And that's what even fascinates me the most. So I, I, I'm one of my favorite songs. I, I, one of the songs I like, she's my favorite. Um, I think Bittersweet, uh, uh, for example. Now, you, you, you talk about meeting, um, <laughs> you've been in a relationship with someone who has left left because he found somebody else. It's a real life story, by the way. It's a real life story. Mm. Then let's talk about it. Oh, no, no, it's fine. Then let's talk about we it. Listen so, to the first of all, you tell us about Bittersweet, for example. We'll be, we'll be getting, getting deeper into the into the songs, into yes. the albums, <laughs> and all the, the songs you've done. But let's pick up Bittersweet, for okay. example. Tell us the story of Bittersweet. What the, the, the song story is about. The song. Literally. What the song is about, and then we go into the, the real life story. If you listen to the song, I pe -pe -pe. some people I've not heard that song. No, it's like the whole And we story. can't play it because if we play it now, the <laughs> will lock us I've down. I've not heard it, so go. Okay, let's <laughs> go. It's a, a, a thing. No, but basically, it's what, it's what Jay said. There was a time when there was somebody I was in some sort of situation with. And the person sort of drew away, and then there was another person in the picture. And because it was like a situation ship, you can't. You, there's no. There's no claim per se. And then the other person that you are now with, who happens to also be a friend of mine, you now flaunt in front of me. Why? Like for me, I was just in a very weird space, and there was a lot of frustration. And sometimes the best way to deal with these things is to put it in music. And so that's how the song was. But do, do you do that a lot? Yeah, do you, yeah, I do that, do you do see yourself a putting a your real life a into lot. your song? I feel like I don't necessarily like to talk about myself a lot, but if you want to know me, listen to the music. And you know Especially what makes the song the unique? Because that's when I, I really, really pour out. You know, you know mm. what makes yeah, the yeah, song that's, unique? That's probably Cheats, listen, cheats. the song, yeah. <laughs> so she sings about, she sings about, and I, I find it mind-blowing. So she sings about <laughs> Um, like gossiping yeah. about the other person chasing so, her man, yeah, yeah. you know, and then at the end of the song, mm -hmm. she's like, "But if you look at it now, me and you, we still, <laughs> we still go I was, fatal." I you was know? being honest. I mean, it, it, that's, that's how I felt. I mean, yeah. of course, now I'm in a much like I'm in, I'm in a different space, but that's how I felt at that moment. Mm. Yeah, so. Now that's the space we want to talk about with relationships. Um, how do I, you handle? How how <laughs> how have you handled relationships? Relationships. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> He's been doing this all morning. Now. There's something wrong with the software. Let me know bit. when to stop clapping. We've run up this. Have you clapped? Clap. <laughs> it's okay. Charlie, it's, we, okay. We, we, it's okay. You connect to the Wi-Fi. It's okay. Yeah. Try. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Run down it's, okay. it's okay. It's okay. How, how has Joy or oh, Adomai, well, I keep going back to the press normal, but how has yeah. Adomai handled relationships, you know, that in a space that hasn't come to... Um, we, we, we've, we, are, we are getting a sense of how you think you've been through in your songs. And if this is one, I can imagine the rest of the things that we are going to go through. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. how have you managed relationships, both with, um, because you come from a, a very Christian home. Mm -hmm. And I, want, I can imagine holding a man's hand or a guy's hand and bringing him home. Oh, I've never done that. Either. You know, do parents open up to your my parents? Yeah. Like... Oh, yeah. But, but occasionally there's the, oh, my mom is, <laughs> my parents, wow. <laughs> <laughs> the, the subtle, you know, hints on when are you getting married and. Yeah, grandchildren and all of those things. They, of course, they talk. I mean, which African parent, honestly, doesn't when you, especially when you're 30 plus at a certain age. Yeah. So, yeah, there's that. But, yeah, my, my relationships, <clears throat> yes, I've, I've gone through something them. that is there. That's, you know, when they say a woman <laughs> is <through> being, <laughs> let, let, me, let me say this as a spark of this debate. Uh -huh. When they say a woman is being, uh, is getting independent, is getting powerful with mm -hmm. career, mm -hmm. sometimes they are. Overly empowered with, uh, with the the states they are in, mm -hmm. so they tend not to be too focused on uh, a man. Is mm -hmm. that true? A statement. <laughs> First, this question goes to Lenny, please. First, because, <laughs> because <laughs> no. How, how does that no. food end? Yeah, because I mean, you know, sometimes you get my... you get. <laughs> thought processes in relation to this conversation. So okay. we don't know for okay. Adam. Let me, let so me, let me start with that. that do, men, do men and guys uh, fear coming to you? Because you become oh, a no, huge brand. 
Not at all. Mm. Not at all. It's as to whether I'll mind you that is the thing. But no, as for coming to mind, I don't think... I can't hear I don't it. think. I don't think I exude... Yeah. I don't think so. I don't think mm. I exude the, oh, you can't walk up to me, you can't stop. No, no. Mm. It's, but it's not a thing that I am actively in. I'm just not, that's not my head speech right now. Actually, there's a lot of things that <laughs> <laughs> Aha. need to So you see where I'm, where I'm going to. So, no, but things yeah. need to align, exactly. like she's saying. Things need to align. So you I don't know, know that I'll be, okay, I'll be minding you, but like, they're there. Yeah, Lenny. Jay. This question goes to you. Actually, not you, Lenny. No, no, I don't think sometimes it's where you are as a woman, uh -huh. right? I just think that... When the time is right, yes, everything exactly. will fall in place and take okay. its well course. Said. That's what I think. Sure. I does, strongly how believe how that. How does a guy know that? How does a guy know that? I don't know. I don't know how a guy would know that. But if sometimes you come to the woman and the woman says, I'm not ready. Maybe she's truly not ready. And it's not because um, she's on a certain level in relation no. to her craft or no. her art or even the industry she's in. And this cuts across, yeah. right? It's not just the okay. creative industry. So on the back of that, for an artist that is into alternative music mm -hmm. and is um, also well and a, and a female in a male-dominated space, how difficult or easy does this work for you with with your music and your your, your career in general? Um, so I. And what kind of challenges presents itself? Um, I've I've I feel like I've been the tro the challenges or the troubles I've had with regards to music has been more discovering or finding myself. I feel like the team that I've had around me have been very sheltered and very protected because mm -hmm. I've not had those things directly. I mean, there are times when I I eventually get feedback out of this is what happened, but it's never been <clears throat> mm -hmm. straight up to my face. So I've been very sheltered. I mm -hmm. grew up, honestly, I grew up sheltered. <laughs> this is why my music tastes too are very curtailed and you know mm -hmm. what's going on because I grew up very sheltered. In the music too, I feel like I've been very guarded and protected and there's a lot that I have not... The, the challenges I've had are internal or mm -hmm. within me as mm -hmm. an individual so yeah for me i know that i'm but i'm in as in after saying that i'm aware that it's still a struggle um there are still times when um as as a as a woman <sighs> hmm. I hear stories basically from my colleagues mm. and my artist friends and mm -hmm. I can understand them but like I haven't like those I don't know those uh, people are hitting on you or this, they ask you to sex sell sex and all of those mm -hmm. things no, I've not You haven't you haven't experienced those no, I haven't. Yeah. But I'm aware that it is, it is well, Would that thing be how a woman also carries herself let's say mm. female art cuz some mm. female artists have shared tales mm. and stories of how yeah. you know some uh, they've been challenged the because of... I think it's the system. Like she's saying, she has a team around her and the team for, formed at an early stage yeah. before, before that spotlight and all those negative whatever could pile on her. Hmm. So there so was a lot of people, from... yeah, there's a whole fire uh, firewall. Yeah, exactly. Between. So at what point are you going to meet and ask for sex for play? <laughs> You are not because there's like twelve. You have to go through the twelve team. thick strong men before you get to him. By that time, you know that it's not happening. It's not yeah. happening. <laughs> yeah, you get it. But I think a lot of the women also put themselves forward. So, like you're saying, it's not necessarily how they carry themselves. Yeah. It's in the hierarchy of your team. Are you somebody that uh, somebody can pick a phone and just start leveraging mm -hmm. with, or do you have enough structures to buffer out? I, mean, mm -hmm. I don't think Rihanna is picking anybody's call. Mm, mm. Exactly, like I get people it. Before you, even if she chat to you, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. So I think your team is the saving grace, quote unquote. Yep. L no, Adama, you, okay, you sure. said you said really nice things about your team. Yeah. What we would want to know is, are you more comfortable working with um, men or women? Men, in, men, 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 men. I've never thought of it like that. I'm I'm comfortable working with people. Okay. It's never been like, oh, I want to work with. I'm mm -hmm. more comfortable here. I'm more comfortable. No, I that majority of my team though are male. It's male, male dominated. But like I, 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 I love to collaborate. No, and she, I have, she, I have what's, been on uh, what's um, collaborations with Black Girls Glow, for example, mm -hmm. um, Poetra mm -hmm. Initiative. It was a group of women, and we right. we bonded well. Men, I bond. I work. I work well with people. So yeah, there's no preference. <laughs> she, she has brothers. 
Exacto. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't go. They are bad as zones. They are bad as zones. So hence the, you know, they are bad as zones. Let's oh let's God. talk your projects now. So yes. let's talk what happened first. What uh, project you came up first with after the bath era, you know, it was some of the very first early things you worked on. Um, that's when Afraba was born. And for me, coming into myself as, okay, you are an artist, you are a singer, wow, okay. Um, and learning all the things that I learned in that period, I just wanted to experiment um, and have fun, you know, come out, come a little bit out of the space that I had been in, that locked myself in, in with regards to jazz and soul and just have fun with music and experiment. And so that's where um, Afraba was born. Because if you listen to it, there's a, lot, there's a lot of genres. There's a bit of rock, there's pop, there's... Mm -hmm. some orchestral something there there's acoustic there's a lot of things so for me that's where that was, was what was the general message in afraba in that in the, that particular project um growth mm -hmm. um self self dis uh, not discovery self expression mm -hmm. yeah self expression and growth mm -hmm. yeah you know it's um i'm i'm wondering how you manage to sustain such a project and such art of singing, again, at a time when that was not the conversation on our music industry, yeah. you know, and what then were you doing the music for as a business or as a career or because if it were such, then that could have influenced what you were doing at that time. So I, I want to understand how you managed to sustain yourself, your 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 mind, your yeah. your what was the word? Saint Peter's piece. <laughs> mental health. Your psyche. mental health. Psyche. psyche. Your psyche. Thank psyche. You. That's the word you're looking for. Saint I, hope, I, hope, I hope you are getting the house now, right? <laughs> you didn't go to a good school. Saint Peter's, please. That sounds like <laughs> national science and math quiz. Like <laughs> the school is simultaneously the school is simultaneously a bus conversation. So wow. Conversation about didn't really learn much. Conversation about depression has you. been real. You, you know, didn't hear like, me. Hear me. I don't want to hear you. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 our depression has been real, you know. And we've had artists who have been doing Afro beats and who did hip life in the hip life era that have yes. sat <laughs> here and high life. Hip life took high life. We from print t-shirts for you. I'm at this point of high life. I'm, a, I'm on we have an to, agenda. We, before of, we close, we'll pick a mind on that as yes, well. Yes, yes. So just I will do the you, briefing. No problem. Corrupt I, yeah, yeah. Let, me, let, me, let me leave that. <laughs> let me leave that, that. I'm on an agenda, you know, of recreating the perception around high life, not an old school gold music, but a, a hip life of a high, a, a hip life called high life. A hip high life. A hip life. A high a lifestyle that is urban trendy called high life. If you get okay. me, that's my agenda. Okay. So I'll get to that agenda later on, but. <laughs> You know, back to it. And like I'm saying, certain artists had shared stories of how they got depressed, even because people are not supporting them. We've had so many countless artists sit in this very seat to speak yeah. on depression. How did you manage to keep your mental health sane at mm. a good point on releasing albums and songs, Afro jazz, you know, Afro fusion and all that didn't speak to the moment and what it was trending? Um, I feel like this is where I, I, I keep saying my team really helped. Um, because, like I said, I'd struggled within myself to even come to that realization. But there's so far that people, there's, there's so far that they can go. They can go. Like, mm -hmm. at some point, you have to pick up for yourself. And I realized I was running on their fuel for the beginning stages. So it was fine. It was new. It was a bit scary. But, like, okay, we're going, we're moving. But at some point, I started to, what are you doing? Where are we going? Why are you here? And there was a lot of internal conflict. So I wouldn't necessarily say I was doing great, like maybe 2015, yes. Mm -hmm. But once we, once we by the time we were putting out the projects, we came out in January 2016. Yeah, I was in a good space. And there were so many other things in life, just generally. Because when it rains, it but, pours. But, but looking at you mentioned <laughs> that. That was going now. on. Yeah, so it just it, it added to it. The so, Adina yeah. conversation, like you, you yeah. I mean, where I mean, your friend Adina, yeah, yeah, she was in the space doing, you know, yeah. music for the people, yeah, and and I don't know how, whether in that way it, it gave you any, um, think about okay, maybe should I just get out of this space or, I think for me it wasn't even get out of this space. It was, what are you doing? Okay, mm. like why are you here? Like, 
fine, how it happened is not something you planned for, it's not something you prepared for, it's not something you thought would happen. Now you are here. We've been riding the wave. It's been like, oh, this is the this is the thing to do now that we're here. And we're like, okay, good. But at some point, you can't just be going with the wind or just sure. riding. You need to know where you are going, why. Like you, there's, there's, There has to be some form of groundedness mm -hmm. that you need to have. And so for me, that's where that came. Like, that's mm -hmm. where the question started for mm -hmm. me. Um, because, yeah, you, your team is there, but you are the artist. Mm -hmm. And you determine the pace at which people go. You can't, it can't be the, the other way around. And so for me, that's where that came, I would say. E eventually, it's led into the, oh, okay, there's this side or this genre of music that is doing better. And so maybe if you joined here, you would find the fulfillment and all of everything that you're looking for. And so we did attempt that, which didn't go too well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much how it went. I can imagine what you were probably <laughs> hanging on to keep you sane. Yeah. And what things, what actual things you were doing to keep you sane. You know, because you, 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 you take days to record a song. You and Reynolds, you, you sit, you work all through hard. You produce a classic piece. Um... I'm trying to remember that there's this particular song that I was so crazy about. Um, it's, oh my days, man. How do I remember this thing? No, Jay, we I don't, can we, pardon we talk that. about it all the time. Um, it was... Um, we can pardon that. The, the progression, the, the song just builds upon it. Oh, man. <laughs> <sighs> it happens to 40-year-olds, Jay. It's fine. No, it's fine. Yeah. It's 14 okay. flex, you know. <laughs> F, F and F. <laughs> um, but you sit down, you, your, your songs are not easy to do. It's not just sing and i'm not saying i'm not speaking down on anybody else's song but it's not just simple that you know <laughs> it's it's difficult so for you to finish that production and then now think about radio airplay tv and then you know the digital space and who is going to listen to my work that at any point in time have any form of effect on you you know when you look at the hard work you've put in the song and when you're getting out there yeah i think it did of course, and also did with my team because like the people I surrounded myself with are very creative people, and so when it came to creating music, yeah, that's not that's the least of our problems. Like now that's where we excel, but afterwards getting um, people to hear it was a challenge. So of course, and at the end of the day, if you look at the music cycle, it has to. No musician makes music to sit on it. Like what's the point? Like mm -hmm. what, what really? What is the point? You want it to be heard. You want the message that you're you're preaching or you're trying to express to be heard and so there's the you also need to consider how to go about that so but it's not a strong it's not it wasn't a strength that we had mm. and so so it became a bit of a challenge because now you've made it you've made the song how do people how do you get people to hear it so yeah it, it definitely was and i feel like it's part of what influenced the oh okay so maybe we should try this side this other side too because maybe it'd be easier because when we're thinking of radio play and you listen to what is generally being played on the radio and um, it might not necessarily be the kinds of stuff that i was doing at the time so it's like okay can we find a balance in between to to have that so that it does go out and so yeah these were the conversations mm. at the time yeah oh, Lily, you've been quiet I know you are packing up with one of those very <laughs> numbers based, but Gathering he'll do all the data. research. He'll do all the research and come with one and uh, just, data in he's probably on your high five right now. Well, high five? Uh, checking your first profile picture. high five still exist? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I just, you know, I'm, you know she, she took a break from music. Yes. I don't know what year that was. I've been trying to get a year, but it's not. It's I not told you it was in my, research. My internet is not working. But <laughs> this was when you were actually on the, on the rise and everybody was obviously calling out. I think you even got nominated for one of the music awards, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. VJ Mays. Yeah. Was it um, female, um, best vocalist? No, it was unsung, which Uns I won. Actually. You won, right. So yeah. basically you were you were on the rise and then yeah. you just disappeared. Exactly. Yeah. You do. I don't know if you want to get personal. Over here, we get personal sometimes. Um. But <laughs> you want to like share what was going on at that moment? Was it was it was it a time for you to reconsider this music journey? Was it too much for you? Was the stardom too much for you? The spotlight too much for you? Maybe you wanted to do music by accident, mm -hmm. and then everything is happening at the same time, fast paced, and everything. 
You didn't prepare for any of these things, exactly. but they are happening exactly. anyways. The start, everybody's calling exactly. you. Get booked here, get booked here, get booked here, get booked here. It's like you're saying everything I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> it was too much for you. Yeah, it really was. And I, aside the fact that it was too much, I wasn't prepared. At mm. no point in my life did I think this was something I was going to do. And so to so suddenly be thrust into it and there's all these demands and there's mm. your your life has to change. I'm the kind of person who was so low-key, I would take a trotro. Now you can't even take a trotro anymore. Mm. Like, it's just, it was, it felt a lot. It felt like a lot. It felt like, hey, this is the pedestal people have put me on. I don't mm. want to disappoint people. I don't mm. want to fail. There's a lot going on, as well as who am I? Mm. What am I doing? Mm. So, yeah, all of that was just serious emotional and mental turmoil. So you had to shut down. I for did, your, I for did, yourself. I, I, it wasn't even that I had to. I think the more it carried on, mm. the, the heavier it got, it shut me down. Mm. Did you speak to somebody at a time? Did you speak to your dad, obviously, being... I mean, I remember, I remember, hmm, I remember the, the time I had just been nominated for um, Unsung, and it was mixed feelings because I was really happy mm -hmm. that um, I was nominated. I was happy because, Charlie, I had a team that had put their all. I mean, I put my all as well. Like, we're building together, and mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a good platform for everybody. Everybody's happy that the work that they've done is being recognized. Yeah. But at the same time, I wasn't, I didn't want it. Because I'm like, look at how fast it's been to this point. Mm. If I go and I win, that means it's going to double yes. because like there's a lot of Ghanaians who don't know me and with this nomination and a win mm. on and the VGM a stage yeah. that's a lot more people and I'm struggling mm. here by the time we get there I don't know what will happen will I die because like <laughs> I don't know how I'm going so I remember fighting and like I, it, deep down like I didn't want to win it because I, I didn't think I was ready, ready. to carry the it. title yeah I didn't mm. I didn't think so but at the same time I did I remember having that conversation with my dad and he's like oh I'm thinking too there's no there's no reason to think about it there's a mm. reason I entered this music space I didn't even try it was one of those things that it was supposed to happen which is why it happened so mm -hmm. everything is going to happen for a reason if you if you end up winning it there's a reason you you did if you mm. end up not there's a reason like so basically don't think about that focus on what you're doing, doing at the moment but yeah it was still really really hard was that was that a very difficult period for you in waiting because now everything is moving fast people are moving on because you know Ghanaians you go quiet a bit on us and then we find an expert person to support. Extremely. So I'm looking at Adoma has been able to build a community for herself and all of a sudden the community is moving on to someone else. Did you feel like you were feeling at that no, point? No, I didn't. Like for me, the way things were in my mind, I, I, a part of me even wanted to slow. Like I, I would have preferred if things had come gradually right. so that I could like have eased into it. I would, it would have been better if growing up at the way a lot of musicians and um, artists say like when they were three years old they knew they were, they were going to be mm -hmm. musicians so like you've had from three years old four five six seven right to mentally prepare, prepare yourself mm. this is somebody who is in my late early 20s right. if not teens yeah who has never for once mm. thought about this again <laughs> all of a sudden you are there right. that's a lot that's mm. a whole so for me at some point like I don't want this. <laughs> or even if I do, let's 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 calm let's, down. Let's, let's calm slow, down. Let's, let's everybody calm down. down. Let's, <laughs> let's calm down. It's too fast. <laughs> so yeah, it was it was definitely a loss for me. So I wasn't even paying attention to the fact that oh people are moving on. Mm. I was okay with that, right. so that I can. Because at the end of the day, I want to give off my best. Mm. I want to know mm. that. Especially when it comes to gigs, I'm so particular about gigs. It, the economy is hard. <laughs> people have spent their hard-earned money for you because mm. they, they want to see you live and, and perform so to come there and you're not I, I, if you're not giving off the best of you i feel terrible mm. because like i feel like i've wasted your time i've i've you you hear the music and be like oh i love this then come to the live and it's like oh but what was that, what was that right. it's, it's a lot so for me i felt like i needed to be prepared and that's what i didn't have so in my mind it's like even if they're going to move on let them move on let me figure myself so out. out because once I do and I come back, yeah, good they will go. come back. So what? So what because did you learn? So, so what, what were some of the things you learned during that period of take a pause, refresh? Um, so for me, back? it was a it was a whole thing. It was take a pause, 
But it wasn't take a pause to even get better at that time. It was take a pause because things had beat me up so badly. Mm. I was pretty much done with life. I was suicidal, wow. actually. Like, I was done. So it took a while to move from that space mm. of, like, I'm completely done to heal. In fact, I feel like the first thing that I needed to do, because everything was triggering. Mm. I couldn't even sing if I wanted to, because I would have a panic attack. Wow. And so, and I had a studio in my house. So now my house was a trigger. A trigger. Mm. Wow. I can't be at home. So I felt like I needed to be in a different environment. And honestly, that's when acting came because I had a break doing something that I had actually had, you know, at four years initially. Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted mm -hmm. to do. So mm -hmm. it was like, mm -hmm. I, I, I had a break and went to that. And it honestly just puts me in a much better headspace. So coming back, it's like, okay, you're not suicidal anymore. Mm. The world is not coming, it's not crashing down mm. on you. Mm. Now you're a bit centered. I realized at that point that I needed help because like you can't, we're not, ex we're not born to exist mm. alone. Mm. Like mm. nobody, no one mm. is an island. Mm -hmm. So I realized I needed help and that's when I, I started therapy. Mm. And after wow, doing that, that for deep. a while, oh yeah, Jay did. After doing that for a while, I was in a much, 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 much better space to now analyze okay this music space this is a gift that you've been given mm. you've not been active you've been doing film now do you want to come back and why do you want to come back and now it's like now the things that i didn't do before i blew up mm. i had the opportunity to do that so mm. in that time it's like okay i want to work on this i want to work on that i want to be better which is what i'm currently doing like i'm in the music space, space i am yeah. i'm now doing that right. at, the, at the first time Shady, we were just going <laughs> as when, when it's bad is good you just move we're just, we're just moving but i feel like right now in the headspace i am i'm improving i know what i can take i know what i can't at the time you do, i didn't even know hmm. like if it is good if it is bad is when it is happening that oh okay this is bad now i know i've gone through a lot of things so if something is coming uh, no, mm, this is not for mm, me. Mm, this is. Mm. I have a better understanding of that. So it's. I feel like I'm a lot more grounded. All, all she says that when, when she's walking in town and she sees a guy coming, she can tell your intentions and stop. Hey, before you move your mouth, stop, stop. Stop it right oh, my guy, there. My guy, stop yeah, right I'll see through you. Yeah, 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 stop right there. You know, it's, it's that bad. If you, you know, if she, she, she did like Makola, where oh, they walk through, like, like if you stop some guy for far up, they say, hey. Hey, stop, stop. Don't come close. The guy don't even think about it. Yet. The guy don't cross the road, <laughs> <self yet. laughs> But But please, we, you, you mentioned something that we, we probably just took it lightly, even though we didn't take it lightly, that getting suicidal. How yeah. bad was this? Shadi, yeah, it, it really was. Um, I think the first time, the funny thing is in that period, I'd never been depressed before, so I didn't even know what it was to say, oh, I am depressed. I didn't know I was. I just knew my energy was really down. I wasn't eating, and I just wanted to be by myself, shut out from the world. And it is now looking back that I can say, um, for like a two-week period, I hadn't left my room, and mm. I wasn't eating. Mm. And so the first time... For two weeks? Two weeks, yes. So the first time wow. I... My friends literally pulled me out to go out, and somebody saw me. It was a, what, what, what? You've lost so much. I was like walking broomstick because I hadn't been eating, and I think that's when it hits me that, oh, okay, something is wrong. You've lost weight. You've not been eating. You're not in a good space. It's, yeah, something is wrong. There's something wrong with you. But now it's like, okay, you've acknowledged that something is wrong. How do you even get better? You don't know how because mm -hmm. things are still hitting you left, right, center, and I'm, I'm not able to deal. And so it's like, Charlie, um, yeah, I think it'd be much better if I'm not here. What were your dad and mom saying to you at this point in time? I want to understand that the family conversations, if that is I feel like I was have. shut out from them as well. Mm. And I, I come from a very, like a very big family and there's a lot of people going in and coming mm -hmm. out. And I have a lot, I'm the firstborn, so like there's a younger sibling. So mm -hmm. I feel like in as much as my parents are very attentive and they're there and all of that, the attention is more on the younger ones because mm -hmm. actually you are, yeah, you've yeah. grown up, you are a bit yeah, more stable. So, <laughs> <laughs> so there's nobody really paying that much attention yeah. on you. And I, I, I was a lot more shut out from them. So I don't even think they realized it until later. I didn't even realize it hmm. myself. So you can imagine. But what about so, the fans, the people who loved you and uh, they were following you, know, you religiously and the next thing they were just... Nothing was, was told to them, and they were just left hanging. What were people's final reactions like? Um, there were... Occasionally, I would get messages 
or someone would tag me in something or if I was out in public, they'd be like, ah, I don't mind, it's been a long time, we've not heard music or stuff like that. But I just, ah, yes, I'm working. Because I couldn't, I, like, at that point in time, you can't come and be tough, talking and mm-hmm. saying your mm-hmm. whole life story casually like that in front of people. So I'd find a way to brush it off. And then again, not be in public. So if you found me in public and I and that is your reaction, I don't want that reaction to be a thing. So now I won't even be going out to start with. Mm. But then there, there were some online, you know, people saying what was going on. No. And I couldn't, I really, at some point, I really wanted to come out and say it, like I'm done. But I, I think my team at the time didn't let me, <laughs> didn't let me do that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I... Yeah. We're going to talk about the movie, but Serial, before that. I'm sure I have something um, to say. Your, your... Your submission earlier on about the music, the fans, the responsibility of being an icon. Um, heavy is the head that wears the crown. Charlie, very heavy. And your neck was not ready. <laughs> At all. <laughs> yeah. Now being an on-screen star, mm-hmm. I would argue that it's even going to be quote-unquote worse. Mm-hmm. And through what you've gone through and everything and growing all the fortitude and all that, do you have any systems in place to cater for this <coughs> new tangent that you're on because it is going to get yes. 10 times worse yes. than yes. if you were doing music. Yes. And I'm saying this because with the music, I would say you were not making popular music. music. Yeah. Yeah. You were doing a niche music where I, I, if you asked me, I'd say that would have been a comfort zone because everybody who would be a fan of Aduma would resonate with your message, your story, your style. Yeah. So that would be a safe space mm-hmm. compared to where you are now, where it's just Masomi TV. Hey, they didn't know. <laughs> you, you get what I'm saying? There's no yeah. reference. It's just another actress in a role. Mm-hmm. And people are going to come from all angles. How are you, how, how, what, what, do you have systems in place for that? What? Um, yes. Um, I think it's part of that period where I said I had to take a break and yeah. um, I was suicidal and went and refreshed and came back and went to therapy. During the period where there was a lot of reflexing, I it's I now am conscious of what I can take, what I can't, the pace at which I want to go. So even with regards to film, it's not everything I do. Um, because like there are so many roles I've been offered that I haven't taken. If I'm not connecting well, if it's overwhelming, you can do that now as opposed to taking on a lot. So it's about getting to the place where mentally I'm prepared for this. So with that comes knowing how to pace yourself, knowing um, what you can take and what you can't. So for me, it's easier as opposed to before. Before, z- notes, there's nothing. Yeah, you're you don't know. You're just running. You're, like, you're literally behind like a regular the crowd and it's all of a sudden they put a spotlight on you and they carry you and they put you there and be an entertainer, perform. You don't know the first thing about anything as opposed to now where it's like, okay, I'm here, I'm in this space. First of all, I agree and I accept that I'm in this space and I choose I to, want be, to be, yeah, I space. want to be in this space, exactly. And so once you even have that, that's like 60% of the work done. Then I'm, I'm prepared, I know the pace at which I want to go. Mm. It's a lot, it's, honestly, it's a lot. It might feel like it's a lot more, but internally, if you are able to handle things, it's not feeling like a lot as opposed to before. No, Adama, you mentioning being suicidal again. I understand, I mean, when you say that you went to have therapy and all of that, right? But also, your dad is a pastor. And you grew up in a Christian home. How strongly do you believe in prayer and its power? And did it ever get to the point where you decided to um, opt for That's that as well yes. instead of straight therapy? <laughs> because being being from the Christian it's home you are through. from, I mean, the first option they will throw at you is you know, <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> the first option they will throw at you is the the prayer bit, right? So did you go through that period of prayer as well? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Yeah, please, for the purposes of playback, I want this question asked again because... Oh, ah. no, no, no. no. <laughs> no because, because we cut into the question with a lot of, you know... No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. We'll use it. We'll, we'll need it. It's a very imp- imp- no, important question no, she's asked. No, work on it. All right, let me ask no, it again. Edit it. Yeah, no, edit it. No, edit it. No, no, okay, no. No, edit it. No, edit it. three, two, um, one. <laughs> I feel like... Um, yeah, I mentioned therapy, but th- that the spiritual aspect was actually the first point, because I don't like to talk about this because it gets me very emotional. Oh, no. But in the space, 
the t that, that particular day that I decided um, to off myself, literally, I had a, a bunch of drugs that I was going to pop, and I was in my room, and I was crying, and I was like, yeah, this is it. I'm going to swallow this thing. Whatever comes, comes. If I go, we, I go, and hopefully I go, and I hope it's not painful. and all of, that's, that's what was in my mind. Mm. And so before I did that, I... I was crying and I just I had disconnected from God to even start with so mm. yeah, that was not even the conversation but in that moment I just looked to God to up to my ceiling and it was like a prayer and I was like yeah so I guess this is it so if I see you cool if not cool and in that particular moment I was about to and this might be believable to, be, be, be believable to some or not but it legit happened it's the experience that mm -hmm. i had in that particular moment it felt like there was somebody in the room who i was alone in my room i felt literal arms around me and i wasn't I scared goosebumps. i wasn't scared it felt like some overwhelming sense of love that i just felt very at peace and happy and it didn't make me do that right. it didn't make it i couldn't go ahead with it and i realized in that moment it probably was jesus who did that and i didn't i ended up not and so after that it sparked off a whole rediscovery of my faith and all of that so yeah that was the starting point before eventually i went to um um you know therapy. i went to pursue yeah therapy and i went to you know to do another I got distracted. No, no, distracted is not the word. I, I was basically in the acting scene. So okay. that's how it started for me. So it's, and it's, till today, it's still a very strong. Yeah, it is. Because even what, retelling the yeah. story, I just got goosebumps yeah. when I was saying well, what, that. So yeah, it has. Radama, it has what, is it, what is it about acting that gave you that great escape? Because you also, you also make clothes. <laughs> you you oh. also make clothes. So <laughs> Can I jump uh, in before we go to acting? So yeah, that we don't sure. have to come all the way back mm, to, sure. to this. Um, at, at therapy, what they basically start off with is unpacking. Yeah. Just get it all out. Yeah. I want to know if the music thing and the pressure and all that was the straw that broke the camel's back and if you're willing to share what the rest of the loads are. Because I've been around, <laughs> I've been around a lot of musicians. Yes. And we are all a little off. Yes, you yes, know, we, you know yes, this. Yes, definitely. <laughs> and I know there's a lot underneath the carpet. We just, oh yeah, this one is worrying me. Raise the carpet. But one day you enter your room and the door is not opening, and then you say that I've reached my limit. Mm -hmm. Music might have been the trigger mm -hmm. to throw you off the That's rocker. That's a very good question. Yes, but please. <laughs> yeah. This is the part where if a Nigerian movie I play, dum, 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 <laughs> and then that damn flute comes <laughs> in. <laughs> We play that, that, that part. I have no way. Wait, so. The guy will give us some falsetto. That's the part we had now. That's, really? that's oh, the question he was asking. Wow. We've watched a lot of TV. We've, 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 wow. we've, we've, we've watched a lot of TV. And to think that these two people are ancestors. Oh, I like it. I like it. It's good to be childlike. So it's actually. I've forgotten the question. The question. Straw that broke the camel's back. What was the real load? What was. What, what stuff mean, was under the carpet? Yeah, the music was definitely the trigger. There was a lot that was under the carpet, but I feel like all of that will be unpacked in future projects. So I don't want to talk about it much. So I should go and So speak. right now, the no, I've not even put it out I for should, you I to should, say. I should, I should follow more. To, to say we're, we're streaming, but right now, um, coming back into music, I felt like I needed to tackle the music side of things, which is what um, Becoming Adoma is. But there, there's like a part one, part two, part three. You know, story. No, she says she won't so say. No, she no, says he's asking, since it's music. It, I mean, she's yeah. here. Why am I? <laughs> <laughs> he's asking for the other things. Your shades. Are tipping off. Yeah. He's yeah. asking for the other things, basically, that's added to. And I'm yeah, saying the other things. Say. Is, we'll find, we'll, we'll no, find she that says guy. it's part of a music journey, so we'll hear it in the yeah, music. We'll hear it in the, the music. Next. Okay. It's coming. Okay. okay. I told you. Do, do, do. If you make, make me come and stream twelve tracks, and I don't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I, know where you live. I know where you live, I don't mind. <laughs> yeah. Your gates might tell you, "Brab, you are house." Say, "You no want to share." Want to share. When 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 that comes out, I'll definitely want to be back here talking and unpacking. We'll be waiting for you specifically mm. on those mm. things. So yeah, they would. We'll be waiting for you. Right that now, same we'll channel. We'll be waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so okay. I mean, now that so you now we can that, go on screen. Yes, because yes. right? um, I would think that acting makes you do anything and become anybody you want to be. 
So if music was an escape or music was a trigger, um, definitely in acting you might have seen elements of some music in there. And so I'm wondering how you were able to really focus on the craft and not allow those triggers to subtly, you know, find you. I think the answer is pretty much what you said. Mm -hmm. Because struggling in my own skin, struggling in a career, and you get an opportunity to be somebody else and something else mm. that is not like you can completely dis like completely disassociate from my life and mm. the problems and go and immerse myself in some character and be that character as an escape. That's that's pretty much how it worked mm. mentally. Mentally, because for you. in that moment when I'm on set and I'm reading the character, I'm not me anymore. Mm. So it's like I've escaped this problem. We'll mm. get to it when I, <laughs> when I clock back to right. Aduma. Right now, I am bossy. Or I'm Did big. you ever get lost in that character? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like you, never, that, you never came for back me, to yourself for a while? I struggled. There, there, were, there were even times when I was in Nigeria, especially, where the director was a bit concerned because it took a while to come back to... Wow. <laughs> I didn't want to be back in <laughs> this space. So it's like moving... And you know the the way we shoot is not is a bit scattered, so yeah. you have to hop from and one scene to another. It was hard to come pull back. back, and it's like, hey, is everything okay? Because like, are you are you fine? So you're actually living the day. Charlie, I mean, the day the day is now. Right. At that, the, by the time we started doing the day, I was in a much better place. But okay. When I was filming in Nigeria, which is I don't know if the what we were working on has even aired mm. per se, but like when I was filming in Nigeria, that's pretty much. You should how talk I was more doing. about Nigeria. You know, that's, the, that's how the challenges. So, I mean, it was challenging, but mm -hmm. it wasn't music. I'm not singing. Yeah. I'm getting lost in another character that is, I can deal, I can deal with her problems, that other person's problems um, that I feel like it's easy to handle because there's a script and we know how we're going. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, the beginning, you know, the end from the beginning. So I know how to deal my life. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know how it's going to end. I can't deal. So for me, that's how I was handling or getting lost in the acting. And for me, it was also a craft that I've wanted to explore, explore. for very I, long I, time. I, so it's like a dream come true in good. addition right. to that. How hard was it snapping out of character? It was hard. It was very hard. And did you ever feel down? Yes. Like when you realized that, wait, that's all fiction. This is yes. just ordinary me yes. in a room. Yes. How did you deal with that? Um... Tried, I really tried not to get lost in that because it would have affected my filming because we were, I was living on set, like they had accommodation and everything and we were there on set. So the hardest points were when we finished and I'm in my room, most of the time I'll just sleep because like if I'm sleeping, I'm not dealing. Mm -hmm. And then once I wake up, before I start to deal, scripts. <laughs> we, and we we continue. So yeah, I wasn't. I wouldn't say I was dealing. I was avoiding. So, so you were yeah. deflecting with the acting. Completely. So yes. was that was that was that therapeutic or destructive? Both. It was therapeutic because now I wasn't in a place where I was struggling, like actively struggling and like you had a temporary. Cure. Yes, tem temporary. But like after that, I feel like after that, especially when we finished filming, I was back in Ghana. Where are you running to? Which hmm. character are you going reality to was use? Waiting at exactly. Which, uh, yeah, which, which character are you using <laughs> to, to run to... Now deal with everything that you... I want to ask a question in between so we, we can continue with the, um, your world of acting. Yeah. Back to the therapy sessions. I know that I'm quite personal, but what, what were the outcomes or, uh, if, the, if the therapist had to write a report? What were the <laughs> outcomes um, of what he had realized or she had realized about Aduma? Um, yeah, I feel like it's part of it's part of where I eventually had to get to. That a lot of the things that you're going through are not, I don't know how to articulate it, but they're not, they are real, but like, they are not, they are not as horrible as you are. I don't know how to articulate it. There's mm -hmm. a, there's a better mm -hmm. way to articulate it, but like you basically, you are capable of dealing with it. You just need to figure out what is going on and how it is going on. Basically, you are in control of it. But at the point, it felt like I wasn't. It felt like life was happening to me and there's nothing I could do about it. So it's, it's about getting your power back. Mm. And I feel like that's what, first of the experience that I had, the spiritual experience that I had, the distraction 
I don't, I don't like to say distraction because it really... You just for us to understand, you the know. Distraction I, 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 that I can explain, I can explain to my, the, 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 my friend. The distraction that Phil friend, was. I can find then, another word. And mm. then the, all of that put together yeah. helped get back the control that I needed to be able to deal. Because if I, I felt like if I hadn't done that, if I hadn't gone to Nigeria, coming back and trying to better myself would have been impossible. Mm. Because like, so it's what, 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 what um, Cyril asked about the acting space whether it was therapeutic or destructive it was destructive in the sense that I was running away and using that as as a cover up but that cover up was necessary to be able to come back and assess things better if i hadn't were had you that, I were you been um I don't know if it makes sense if i'm going to be hard were you blowing uh, out of proportion what didn't exist as um, I wasn't blowing out of proportion what didn't exist, and, but and I, at the same time, I was blowing out of proportion what didn't exist. So, example, um, the expected reactions from people with the music you do, uh, dealing with the, the space, the alternative space you found yourself in, um, finding whether you, you fit for cameras in terms of acting or you fit for microphone in terms of music, um, relationship with, with people. What are people thinking about you? Um, I, were, these, were, were, were these are things that were hitting you day in, day out, like yeah. getting you to worry and wonder, what are they saying about me? What are they saying about my, my, my career? Um, okay, I'm growing. Um, what if it doesn't happen the way I want it to happen? Well, these are things that were happening. Yeah, exactly. Pre- pretty much. A little less on what are people saying, mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. like there's too much internal conflict to even come and add did what, you feel you were too were good? Saying. Too good? For, I'm, I'm telling you what strong, sometimes I feel very, about very, myself. A very serious case of imposter syndrome. Mm. I, I still feel like I struggle with it a bit mm. now. Mm. I don't, I've never felt like I'm too good. I feel like there's still so much work to be done. I feel like sometimes people put me on a pedestal that I am not necessarily at yet. And it's a, it's a constant struggle and uh, goal within me to match up. So I, at, at no point did I feel, even now, at, at no point do I feel too good to be. No, I mean, I, 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 so tell you, I tell you that um, the, reason, the reason why I'm, I'm even saying this, like personalizing this conversation, um, for me, in my, in my entire journey, yeah. the one point that I, I find myself back, the two points that I find myself back at what I will straighten my mind for the next 24 hours before I get back into confusion is when I come and sit down on television or radio or I go back into my studio to do a voiceover because there are so many things I want to do. Yeah. And I try so many things. I do so many things yeah. and either they are incomplete and then the only thing that was treating me back after 24 hours to remind me that, hey, let's go again. It's when I come and sit back on radio mm-hmm. or TV. or So I, I don't know. I'm just trying to um, associate this uh, problem that I have to possibly what was happening to Adoma as in... Um, looking at yourself and imagine, look at, look, I have produced a song. You've listened to your own song. Like me, I'm driving my car listening to him. I'm like, this girl human. You know, I'm saying wow. this to myself. Uh, <laughs> I mm-hmm. mean, on occasions I've called you to tell you that, Lo, yo, I, I just bought your music. Good, I bought it. Ha, huh, I should find it. Mm. I bought the song. I'll, I'll look for it. Yes, okay. to tell you that. So here I am admiring somebody. I'm thinking of, like, I see you godly. And I'm wondering what you are saying to yourself, hmm. you know. So that's that's how that's how I'm seeing it that as a fan, um, and my indirect pressure I'm putting on her that why is she disappointing me? Is that what she was feeling like? Am I disappointing my people? Yeah, do I feel parts. like I have so parts. much in me that I want to do. I can imagine. Definitely. Anyway, I, I I wanted to just okay. tap in with what Lenny asked her about the therapy and spirituality. Yeah. Um, Often as Christians, even here as Ghanaian Christians, yeah. it could be how we're exposed to Christianity. You are not quick to think about going to therapy. Yeah. You are being told, pray about it, pray yeah. about it, pray yeah. about it. Today I asked a question on Twitter, do we have clinical psychologists in Ghana? It was just to test, you know, the pulse of how many people know about clinical psychologists that they could go to. Cyril mm-hmm. shared one with me, you know. He gave you a number? Yes, he gave me a number, but you see, you don't even have a number. Well, oh, but, 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 <laughs> get you see, oh, oh, but I'm a psych, I don't, she's my mate, so I'm a psych major. Yeah. I know at least six Oh, you major psychology. Yeah, I'm a psych uh, major. I yeah, job, you see, no, and I job psychology. And that's because, see, and that's because. Me, I, t- 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 
I'm crazy, but I'm not mad. You see the difference? Yeah. I'm crazy, but I'm not mad. I, I, know, I know a lot of clinical psychs. You see, that's, I'm a psych that, major, that's because so those are my I can see by, by advantage because you majored in psychology. Yeah. But the average Ghanaian may not even know about yeah, the, the or, need or for a clinical, clinical psychologist. psychologist yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So whether you are an artist, you are a corporate person, whatsoever. So maybe here where I say, but home pie, pray about yeah. it. You have tasted both worlds, right? How do we combine the two? How do we balance the two and not leave one? Which one works the best? Both. You can't, I feel like you can't do one without the other. Yeah. I don't think, I, I feel like, um, well, it depends on your faith, but I feel like just therapy isn't enough. Well, for me, just therapy isn't enough. The spiritual aspect is very important, but mm. just the spiritual aspect too so, isn't enough. enough. There was even a time where I had a one-on-one a one -on -one with my pastor and they, my pastor mm. recommended therapy. That's even before I even went. Oh. Do you think the church has failed in, that, in this conversation I, where you come yeah. to see a pastor and the pastor says, okay, we've given you spiritual counsel. We'll it's time no. for you to we'll see. We'll no. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's going. He's going. He's going. Do you think it's an opportunity to advocate for that? Actually? Yes, definitely. Mm. Definitely. I feel like the... Yeah. I, I, I mean, faith in God is good, but like faith without works too is some way. Facts. And, and God has put like some of the things we pray about mm. god isn't going to come from heaven and do them like mm. at the end of the day god works through people mm -hmm. i mean why do we have medicine why do we why do people are people doctors mm. god is the one who pro probably provided the opportunity for them to know the things that they need to know right. so that they can actually help the people that they need to help right. so at the, at the end of the day my mom is a doctor my mom is super christian like super but she's mm. a so doctor you can't so like <laughs> at the end of the day my mom won't say all the sick people that come to her at the hospital, she's going to pray for them and then go home. No, mm, she's still, yeah, there's still medication, yeah. there's still, so I feel like both, both work. work. And okay. anybody that is advocating for just one, is not, uh, not Talking about your mom, um, I saw a tweet in 2020. Hey, where, where you said, you said that you're, at a time, yeah. four years ago at the time, yes. your mom at that age, you know, we're all about kids, but you're not too sure about that for yourself. Yeah. Okay, let me read it for you so that wow. you understand what I'm saying. Let brand new hair, brand new wow. I told you. Let me read it for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh no, it's not anything to worry oh, no, about. No, no. I just want to. I'm I just want to curious. know if it's the same. Yeah. Okay. It's the same thing now okay. because. Um, okay. okay. So where you at? Okay. Um, 2020. 2020. In, in, yeah. in, before, while he's archiving, um, the day, the time where she was, day of week. Um, <laughs> what while, she was doing. While balancing the, I mean, they say um, trust in God, but lock your car. Tell you. Balancing okay. the, <laughs> you already have, the, the I'm, spiritual I'm, I'm, and the, the, the worldly. Yeah. Do we see that happening with your creative expression? Yeah, Christian think, films, Christian songs, and Christian EB, a gospel world project, whatever, where, you know, we've had your niche and your artistry come to life, but are you going to extend your spiritual spirituality Absol into the... Absolutely. Like I said, there's a lot of... The question you asked, the other... The carpet, yep. it's coming. Please, when so it's time when to carry there, it, I have boys. Well, we <laughs> <laughs> we can come and carry the carpet. Ah, yeah. <laughs> to answer your question, definitely. Okay. Definitely. Right, so this is 22nd July 2020, 2.20 p.m., right? <laughs> you said, I was almost four years old when my mother was my age currently. And I don't have the slightest plans to have kids oh, in the near future. Mm -hmm. We are not our parents. Discuss. <laughs> <laughs> it's discuss for me. She threw it to the timeline, never thinking that it would be thrown oh, back. Yes, yeah. I did. Yeah. And I see have a Examine and answer your question. So I'm just, yeah. I'm just, I'm just curious. Oh, uh, yeah, I remember, I remember that tweet. Um, so, okay, I'm, I'm still at that point, honestly, um, where half of me is is open to the idea of kids the other half not so much i and the the part that's not so much um the not so much part basically is from this world is messed up man mm. like this world is terrible mm, yeah. every almost everybody that is here has gone through moments where they're like i wish i wasn't mm. here not even mm. on a suicidal sense mm. like Charlie, why, why what's I, all this exactly <laughs> and so for me i'm just looking at myself knowing everything i know about being here mm. bringing a child somebody into who this is going to at some world. point be like why am i here yeah. flip it's question like, it's like what are we doing 
Well, yeah. Flip question. Yeah. I'm, I could list 20 women right now who will tell you that it's bringing forth life that grounded everything they'd been dealing with. Yeah. Right? Women who feel like they've been floating in the wind the whole yeah. time until they had a kid, yeah. and then boom, foundation. Yeah. What about that? I mean, that's the other side. Like I, I told you, I'm, I'm yeah. splits. There's the part that doesn't. There's the part that does. The part that does is this. I've always that, loved kids. I so want. So are you saying I that if him. if a guy. But she said the guys are not approaching to because squat they are around. Security be high. <laughs> if a guy yeah, first question you just pregnant <laughs> right now, uh -huh. you you cancel it. Oh no no no. Mm -hmm. Charlie guys. We'll select it off. Charlie guys, you chat. Uh, Funga oh, Street, it? number one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't, but it's, it's it's almost the same approach with music. I would just want to be prepared for it. Because okay. if that happened, it's like, okay, it is here, and I have to deal with it, and it might be a lot to deal so with. So if it were, I just if, want to be prepared if assuming you were in a relationship now, and it was on your man's table, priority that he wants a child now, in this... I'm not prepared for Okay, March, <laughs> March... March, you can if you have uh, March are late because December is it will be next year. So <laughs> let's assume that a man. <laughs> the answer remains the same. What did I'm she not say? She's not prepared for it. Prepared for it. It's wow. not the timing she's okay. not prepared for. It's the eight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, timing is part. It's to. Uh, I'm still trying to find the middle ground because there's the part, like I said, there's a part that is like Charlie. Yeah, it's the part. I've also it. seen certain videos that are like. Oh, that's not happening. Yeah, to you. <laughs> I see you posting that. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's I was, I was just it. about to yeah. come to the phobia of giving birth. I don't know how people birth. have done it. My mom did it five times. <laughs> wow. I don't know how people, people ten people like Rihanna is about to do it after she just did it. <laughs> again. I don't know how they are doing it, and for me, I'm just sitting down here like I don't think so. That's part, part of the fear. Would you opt for sur yes. surrogacy? Oh, yeah. I guess since you don't want to go through that. I don't know. Like right now, where my mind is quiet, it's not even it's a not conversation. I'm constantly thinking, thinking about. Only a human being. I do easier. want kids. Mm. I'm just afraid, and then there's the fear of exactly what I said. Why are you bringing them into this? Like I wish the world could f be fixed so that when I'm bringing someone here, it's fixed, and I'm not bringing them to a broken space. Come mm. and break them further. One of our, our viewers is saying, "I know, but come on, come on, come on, see, son, I'm coming, 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 i am coming i am coming i am coming i am coming i am Really? I have a deal with Ghana no, Police. No, I'm not when I say when I said deal, I'm saying like your experiences with Ghana Police. Hey, I've shared some I've, stuff I've with shared her, things. Right? Because hey, what have I been tweeting? <laughs> <laughs> because when you were in Nigeria, yeah. um, your friend was giving you a ride. I don't know where you guys Look were. Look at Lily giving her diary. Only that. Page 16 here. You know your friend. Your, yeah, friend, your, friend, your friend was giving you a ride. I don't know where you guys were going, whether you were leaving. I don't know. And then I think um, he had a, a dead tire. Yeah. And the Nigerian police, you know, um, came to help with filling up the tire. And you so was, fascinating. And you're yeah. so excited. You actually put it out on your own Twitter. What did I say? Okay. All right. Let's find it. No, no. Because, like, I, want... I feel like I'll be tweeting things. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I, I wanted to find out. For, because I, I remember you, um, I can't find that particular tweet. But yeah. um, what I'm about to say right now yeah. um, about you being asked about your age and your ID. Ah. Uh... Yeah, I, I, I feel like I've been told I don't necessarily look my age. Your age, yeah. Even with my parents, um, they don't look their age. And so there's been all, like, the time <laughs> the time I turned 21 was a whole thing. I was in Nigeria at the time. Right. And it was a whole thing because I was told I look 14. And so <laughs> nobody was believing that I was 21. So imagine looking 14 and driving. Driving. <laughs> and the police wondering what is a teenager Dude. who just literally became a teenager a shock. doing with a car. Okay. So, yeah. Let me... Yeah. The, the tweet was on um, 14 February 2019. <laughs> it was a vows day. <laughs> 4 1 p.m. He said, in a friend's car as he's driving the streets of Lagos, the car stops because... Uh, okay, actually, there was no fuel. My bad. There was no fuel. Okay. He's trying to figure out how to get some... when uh, How to get some when police shows up. They actually fill up the tank. No money's taken. Yes, police in Nigeria. Do you remember this experience? Trying to remember. This is in 2019. Yeah, I, I check. Actually, yeah, you don't. Wow. 
Ago, four years. That's yeah. yeah, that's four years ago. Yeah, yeah. he just well, I don't remember what tweet, I was wearing right? last Tuesday. <laughs> he's, he's, he's going yeah, I just, I just wanted you. to find out your experiences with, like, because I've seen subsequent tweets where, you know, you quote on other police-related stories. You're like, Ghana ah. police, see your mates. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just oh, wondering yeah, yeah. if you've had some bad experiences with Ghana police oh, or it's just not necessarily. It's just generally stories like that and how um in in here when people talk about their experiences is like I wish some of these things would not, We're not be things. Yeah. Like we do have them. Yeah. It's not I don't think it's even just restricted to police, just generally life. Okay. My final question before Jay takes over. Um Spike Lee was in the country and um i just listened to an interview before i got here uh where he revealed that um he didn't know that there was a thriving film industry in ghana he only knows about about nigeria nobody has approached him wow. from where you sit and having been in this you know industry for some light years what do you really make of the film industry in ghana hmm. <laughs> I like that. I know, right? As she finds herself, you know, because you've been to Nigeria, you've seen what's there. happening there, yeah. right? So, what do you make hmm. in the hmm. industry that you find yourself she in? She has answered you. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Is there no money, no support? What's going on? What's really going on? Because we are just outside I'm, the club. I'm, I feel like I'm relatively new in the film space, mm. um, and I've gotten the opportunity to. I think we, I even had a conversation with you, Jay, about this. Um, I've gotten to be in Nigeria and see how they work. Even right here in Ghana, I was on um, the snowfall. I was, I was going to get to that. I was, That's on the I, <laughs> I was on the snowfall cast, and they literally brought their people. Like mm. it was, it was the whole your sister place. was also on there as well, right? Yeah, my sister was Great. there. And it mistook so, you for. It mistook, mistook your sister <laughs> for you. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I've seen, I've not been to Hollywood, right. but I've been in a, in a situation where I see how they work. Mm. And then I've also been on Ghanaian sets, and it's like, yes, there's a lot to learn. There's what a, is a lot? Tell us. We are not there. We are not on a set. A so and, tell us. Okay. And also, I feel like I can't also tell you because. Mm. These are, it's not an industry or it's not a space that I have immersed myself in. This is just me mm. observing for the first time. Right. There's right. a lot that there could also be flaws in the system and all of that that mm. I'm not aware of. It's just, oh, okay, this is how these people are. And just on that one time basis. So I can't really poke. As but this is, your, this is your personal experience. This, 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 <laughs> this, this is a personal we'll experience. We'll vote for you later. Today, you are not on the ballot box. Yeah. Your experience. Your experience. Don't speak for everybody in the industry. But so, so me, my experience, that's what we want to hear. Um, hmm. This one. Hmm. Yeah. I feel like the biggest thing probably would be funding. Mm. Um, generally, creative in the creative space, we don't have as much here in Ghana, as mm. o- as opposed to some of these other places. In Nigeria, it's a thriving, oh Lord, it's a thriving industry. Mm. And you can tell by the way things are done and how things are done and how people take it on themselves to do things. Because like, they, they know they are making good living out mm. of it. Even with the, the, the set that I was on Snowfall, organization is crazy. Mm. I'm just, it's crazy. First of all, I saw equipment I've never seen in my life. But then, yeah, that's, <laughs> that also boils down to funding to get mm, some of these mm. things in. Because I feel like there are people who know how to use them. There are people who have studied. Like, people, people know a lot. But right. it's like, are there, is there an opportunity for them to have them to actually implement it in the spaces that we are not Not necessarily. But then, yeah, organization. And they have so many, like some of the, I don't know, yeah. Hmm. To help you. I don't know what else. <laughs> to help you. It's a lot. It's no, a lot. On, on you've, seen, side, yeah. you, you've seen the best, quote-unquote, yeah. of both worlds. I'm using best, quote-unquote, because you're not in Hollywood, like you yes, mentioned. You've just had a taste, taste of it, it, right? It's like a, you've, a, a, a slight... Yeah, just a, a, a tiny I, taste yes, of it. Okay. But um, is there any way you're trying to... With what you've seen with their production organization, however they go about their things, is there a way you are looking at incorporating that into Ghana's movie... Um, space and movie um, scene and implementing it. Um, right now, I, I, my, my role I feel in the film space is as an actor. I've, I'm, I mean, I've, I've gotten certain um, hints or a certain type of pull to, mm. at the, the other parts like being a director, being a producer, mm. and all of that. Um, so I don't know that there is any way now 
at the moment that I can implement anything because like mm. I'm I'm an actor and basically some of these pre-production things are already done mm-hmm. before I come. Mm-hmm. So I'm just observing that, okay, this is how this is done. Um, maybe when I get a stronger footing in even knowing how things are done right. to start with, then we can have that conversation. But I, I just feel like, yeah, fun, fun, pop funding is probably the biggest thing. Yeah. Right. Well, how, how did Snowfall find you and your sister? Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, because yeah, I know Snowfall, Ghana, we don't really have a lot of um, Snowfall agencies. Snowfall found my person. sister. They found your sister. They found, they found me. Mm. It's very interesting. It's but very, your sister very, is not a... My sister is not an actor. So, um, um, shout out to Malko. Malko came to the studio. I don't even know what he came to the studio to do. And he didn't meet me, but I think he had come to do something at the studio. The studio and my sister stop. was there. Yeah, the stop. Mm. My sister was around and he saw her and said, oh, she fits a role for mm. something. And my sister has to laugh because... She's basically laughing and saying, ha, 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 that's funny. I'm not, I'm not an actor. My sister is an actor. I'm not an actor. And Marco is like, oh, no, no, no. I think you'd just come and try. It, you just wow. come and try. So, so for her, out of curiosity, it wasn't serious. Not to her at all. Mm. She goes and auditions, and she says it went well. She didn't even tell me she was going for the audition. That's how unserious it is. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't tell me, but she went and she said it went well. And then after that, Malco down says, Oh, your sister is an actor, and the role it's there's their sister, so it'd be good if she. Oh. So it wasn't even me. Right. So she now comes to tell me that this happens. I'm like, ah, Okay, I go and audition, but I didn't go with her or try, I didn't try to affiliate with her in any way. Yeah, you just went by your own. So I just went yeah. on my own. Mm. And then that happened. And eventually, they went to pick, they picked her before they even picked me. So if you even watch the this thing, she has way more, more yeah, screen time yeah. than I do. And for me, it just makes me happy. It makes her happy too. It's like her first time acting ever in like it's a Hollywood. It's very role. interesting. So, and yeah. what I find intriguing about I want to say about your family is that yeah. most of your big breaks have come out of some accidental yeah, opportunities. That's, uh, true. The music, your sister's acting. True. You know, well, Joshua, we know he was in the Crossfire group. Yes, so yes, then, uh, yes. But the two of you, do you, do you sometimes say that like, look at us. I do. <laughs> I do. I do. A lot. I wow. feel like I'm very blessed. I, do, mm. I, do, I won't even say luck. Mm. I feel like I'm very blessed. And I feel like the name Aduma is really doing a lot in my career because it means grace. And so, yeah, that, that, that has been well, very... Well, now, now that you're back, becoming Adoma <laughs> and all that, yeah. what's next? What, exactly. what are we looking um, forward to? So, becoming Adoma is the new project that delves a lot more than this conversation. Although this conversation has been very... You've dealt yeah, a it's a big conversation. <laughs> yeah, it de- delves a lot more specifically into everything from when I started mm-hmm. music up to... to to now mm. um all the difficult questions all the difficult experiences everything has been documented in the documentary and then in the music so i've been screening that mm. um the next screening is happening on the 30th of april and i'll be screaming screening every last su- sunday of the month from now till about june or august there why about. why that why that strategy what's what's the the, the science behind that um i'm just i just want people to I want us to have those conversations. I right. want people to, for those who have heard the music and probably don't still connect properly, I feel like it's a good space to have. It's a safe space. And mental health is, is something I, I struggled with. Mm. And so it's me putting myself out there. It's mm. very hard mm. because like, mm. I'm a very private person. Mm. So mm. talking about certain things are hard. But I feel like it's necessary to have, to have these conversations. And a good start is having a safe space to be to, to even mm, have that. Have so well. after we finish watching, there are people there who can you can share your story. You can mm. ask. So more what are, what are we seeing on our screens oh. now? You mind you mind just telling us real quickly? <laughs> okay, so this is like a um, a teaser of the project visually. Mm. So this is in the clouds. I was sort of going through everything, mm-hmm. all the songs in the clouds, and then smoke and mirrors. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. I see. Well, that's that squad, if you if you go and stay with them, you 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 yourself you touch. <laughs> <laughs> they think and think. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, but I'm, I'm inviting yeah. everybody. Like yeah, we're guys, coming. We're Sunday. Yeah, should come. Yes. Yeah, Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. This Sunday. Yeah. yeah. This Sunday. Yeah. Is this Sunday? No, the next. No, one. the next one. The next. Thirtieth. No, fifth, eighth. Thirtieth. Yes. Thirtieth. Thirtieth. Yes. Thirtieth. Sunday. Sunday. Yes. The next one. Is the not next 30th. screening is thirtieth. Next month. 
April. April. Oh, okay. Right, right, yeah, right. Okay. Just, just got it. Got it. I mean, well, next I month. mean, yeah, next, by next month, this the month is ended. <laughs> no, what we kept saying, when you said, by Saturday, when you said, when I said Sunday, you said Sunday, and I thought, I said Saturday. Sunday. Which one did we, did we discuss? Was it Sunday or it was next month? I think it was supposed to have happened last week. It was supposed to have week. happened last week, but yes. now uh -huh. it's not. Yeah. Yeah. So it's next month ending? Yes. yes. Okay. okay, all right, sure. Yes. Great, great. One more thing. Yeah. We miss oh, your, your concerts. Okay. We miss your concerts, your intimate Aww, concerts. Yes. I I remember them very well wow. because uh, my life. <laughs> yeah, we miss those. Are we gonna have those concerts Absolutely. back again? Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. lovely. Because um, the Riabosses, the TTUs, yeah, and all we're that, we have all passed through. So uh, excited to to know that. Yep. <laughs> All right. Wow. Well, we've had a very good conversation with Adama this morning on the show. It's been a, it's been good having you here. We have a good conversation now. So when is uh, becoming Adama eventually going to roll out? You know, um, after after the screening that's happened on the thirtieth is what? Is watching the documentary and the, the documentary film and film for the project. Before the project, no, the, the project is out. It's out. The yes, it's on. on it's on. It's on. It's, but it's on. The documentary platform. and the film gives us a lot more depth. Um, so yeah, full the full package. If you felt like, because people have been giving me sent a lot of feedback on just the projects, and I'm like, it's so much more if you actually experience it um, as the package that it is. So yeah, I'm inviting everybody to to come through. All right. So of course, we'll definitely amplify that uh, date when we're getting closer to it as well. Um, and it's been good having you here. Join us on the show. We had a great, uh, interesting you. one hour and a half yeah. uh, conversation. Wow, it's been an hour and a half. Yeah, it's yep. been an hour yep. and a half yep. of a lot of things that we've spoken of. Thank you so much for honoring this invitation you, and being here this morning with us. We're putting on the screen now a trailer of the of Becoming Adama. Uh, just about to check it out. So sit back, relax. And we are back again tomorrow for a weekend edition of Culture Daily. Culture Daily tomorrow will be Stone Boy and Kwame Eugen. You can't afford to miss it as well. Name is Jay, Cyril, Olele, and Lenny. And Adama, thank you so much. Have Here a good day. For our main attraction, a very confused butterfly. Adama! A few years ago, music chose me in the most unexpected way and it thrust me into the limelight when. I was absolutely not ready for it. Adama's arrival was, for me, spontaneous and very innovative. People loved how different she was making her sound. People loved how different her videos looked. We were moving on parallel lines, headed towards the same goals at different pace. It's been really overwhelming and stressful and exhausting. I think the feeling was that she just didn't want it, want it as much as they did. She's delivering these lines and she has to cry at the same time and she has to scream and shout. It was exceptional. Mimi decided that it was me who was going to save Patrick. I hope that she is happy with what has been made. I'm still growing, I'm still evolving, I'm still learning, I'm still becoming Adma. <laughs>